will start uh, today by going through the model checking algorithm for LTL properties in a more detailed way. So, in the last class we had seen that the basic philosophy of LTL model checking was like this that we create a checker automaton from the negation of the property, we extract a finite state machine from the implementation and then we check whether the product of these two automata has any run and the run is uh, is an accepting run where accepting run as we saw later on is defined not only by whether it reaches certain states but but the fact that it should reach those states infinitely often and for that actually we saw that when you build the uh, the tableau or the checker automaton then let us leap through this then every run of this checker automaton uh, is not an accepting run in the sense that it is possible for the automaton to go round and round in some cycle without ever reaching a state which satisfies the property. So, therefore, uh, our acceptance condition is not that it should reach such states, but should reach certain types of states infinitely often. Right? And then uh, we found that when we took the product of that with the uh, finite state machine extracted from the implementation, if there is any path which is an accept accepting path in the product automaton, then we say that we have found a counter example for the original property because the automaton was created for the negation of the property and any run which satisfies uh, the acceptance condition is therefore a refuting run for the original property. And if the product does not have any accepting run, then we say that the product automaton is empty because any automaton which does not have any accepting run is said to be empty. Is that clear so far? So, now let us go into a little more theory behind this, but before we go into that, let us quickly look at some computational facts. Now, if a LTL property has k sub formulas then the checker automaton for it has order of 2 to the power of k states. Okay. So, the size of the checker automata is exponential in the length of the LTL property. Okay. And LTL model checking is p space complete, right. but it is the algorithms that are there are linear in the size of the implementation. So, the exponential that you see in the LTL model checking algorithms is the exponential in the in the length of the formula and therefore, the the thing that really hurts us is not the, the not this exponential, but the size of the implementation. So, though though it is linear in the size of the implementation that is the main bottleneck because the size of the implementation is typically very large. So, this is what reiterates this slide reiterates what I said just now. Okay. So, efficient compact representation of the state space is one of the key challenges and also the checker aut automata grows exponentially with the length of the property. So, when we will have big specifications this can turn out to be a problem also, but we can always uh, in fact, what we do is we always check properties one by one. So, therefore, that the this exponential always remains contained. Now, this is what we are going to look at. We are first going to look at the formal procedure for creating the checker automaton and for that we will see that LTL properties can be converted to non-deterministic Buchi automaton. And then we will uh, briefly go through the determinization problem of Buchi automata because if you have a non deterministic automata, and then how do you determinize that before verification? That is one thing that we will study. There is something very peculiar about the determinization problem of Buchi automata, which warrants uh, independent study of that. And then uh, we will go through model checking where we will look at algorithms for finding strongly connected components and we will look at the 
methodology for tableau construction. And then we will go into CTL model checking and we will study fixed point algorithms for CTL model checking. And then we will see how LTL model checking can be cast into CTL model checking and, and solved using a CTL model checker. Okay, so, this is the agenda. Now, a few definitions. The symbol omega is used to denote the set of non-negative integers that is omega is 0, 1, 2 this set. Okay. By sigma, we denote a finite alphabet. Sigma star as we know already is the set of finite words over sigma and sigma omega denotes the set of infinite words or omega words over sigma. Okay. Now, this is the difference between sigma star and sigma omega. This is this is infinite words. Okay. We write alpha belongs to sigma omega as alpha equal to alpha 0, alpha 1, where each alpha i is a member of sigma. Right. All right. So, given any infinite word alpha, the first symbol in that is alpha 0, the second symbol is alpha 1 and so on. Okay. So, we just we can enumerate these numbers, these symbols and we will denote by INF alpha as the set of, as a finite set of letters which occur infinitely often. Remember that the alphabet is finite. Okay, so, the number of symbols that we have is finite. Okay. Each word is infinite. All right. And INF alpha is the number of, is the set of letters which occur infinitely often in alpha, okay, where alpha is a word. So, it is the set of signals, say, set of symbols A belonging to sigma such that for all i there is some j greater than i such that alpha j is A. So, in other words that uh, wherever you are in this word, there is always another future position in the word where A occurs again. Okay. So, that is another way of saying that A occurs infinitely often. So, there is no last A in the word. Okay. Wherever you are in the word, in the future you have another A. Okay. So, for all I, there exists some J, J greater than I such that alpha J is A. Is that clear? So, INF alpha is the set of set of symbols which occur infinitely often in alpha and alpha is a infinite word. An omega automaton is a quintuple like this Q sigma delta Q i A C C where q is a finite set of states, sigma is a finite alphabet, delta from q cross sigma to, to the power of q is the state transition relation. So, when we say to the power of q, this means this is a non-deterministic uh, relation. Okay. So, this is a state transition relation. q y belongs to q is the initial state and A C C is the acceptance component. Now, omega automata is defined over a set of different types of automata and those automata differ in the acceptance component and we will see some automatons which are, which belong to the set of omega automata and which have different types of acceptance components. Okay. So, this is a very important field of study in computer science, okay. the, the set of automatons which, which accept infinite words. Hmm. And within that class, we have this omega automata and again under omega automata, there are various types of automata which differ in the acceptance component. In a, uh, sorry, this is a typo. In a deterministic omega automata, this should be deterministic. A transition function q cross sigma to q is used. Okay. So, please uh, read this as deterministic. It has the, written the just the opposite way around. 
the acceptance component can be given as a set of states okay uh, as a set of state sets or as a function from the set of states to a finite set of natural numbers we will see examples of this okay. so within the uh, within omega automata the first is the one the first one that we look at is the bookie automata and as you can see that this quintuple is the same except that for bookie automata the acceptance condition is a set f okay how do we uh, what is f f is a subset of q it is a subset of the set of states okay. and a word alpha belonging to sigma omega is accepted by a so an infinite word alpha is accepted by a if there exists a run pi of a some run pi of a on alpha satisfying the condition that inf pi intersection f is not equal to empty in other words that if you look at the set of infinitely occurring symbols in pi okay then that infinitely occurring set of symbols has a non empty intersection with f so in other words at least one of the states in f has to be visited infinitely often during the run so in the run pi at least one of the states in f is visited infinitely often right then pi is an accepting run of the bookie automata is that clear no okay so see inf pi is the set of states which are repeating infinitely often no what, what what do you mean by symbol this is this is a state set right okay hmm? see w let us go through this once again a word alpha belonging to sigma omega is accepted by a if there exists a run pi of a on alpha so when you give alpha as the input to this automata it is going to trace some path pi okay inf pi is the set of states which are occurring infinitely often in that that intersection f should be non empty is that all right so that is the definition of the bookie acceptance condition okay f is the set of accepting states and bookie acceptance says that accepting states must be visited infinitely often okay this one tells you that on the input alpha this automata states uh, traces the path pi and in pi there is some accepting state which is visited infinitely often therefore this is an accepting run of the bookie automata is is it clear no is that clear now therefore the language which is accepted by this automata is uh, la equal to alpha belonging to sigma omega such that a accepts alpha is the omega language recognized by a now this is another type of automata it's called muller automata and the muller acceptance condition is like this that the acceptance condition f is a subset of 2 to the power q so it's a subset of the power set of q okay a word everything else is the same a word alpha 
is accepted by A if there exists a run pi of A on alpha satisfying the condition that inf pi belongs to F. All right. Now, what does this mean? This means that the set of infinitely recurring states of pi is exactly one of the sets in F. Right? What is F? F is a set of subsets. Okay. So, given a given all the states states that, that are there, I define a set of states, some subsets of states, right. A, some collection of these subsets is F and what we are saying is that on input alpha, if the automaton goes and gets settled in one of these state sets, in other words, it keeps on visiting only these states and no other state. Then according to Muller acceptance, this is an accepting run of the automaton. Is that clear? The difference between Buchi automaton and Muller automata? In Buchi automata, the accepting condition is a set of states which must be visited, some member of it must be visited infinitely often. Right? Then it is acceptable as per Buchi acceptance condition. Muller acceptance the automate the path for the input alpha should go and settle in a set of states which is one of the set of states in f right so it is going to stay only in that set of states not going to come out of that then this is acceptable as per muller acceptance right with these two types of automata in mind let us proceed forward so just remember Buchi acceptance and Muller acceptance. So in a paper in 1983, Gulper, Moshe Vardi and Sisla, they, they uh, contributed this theorem which says given an LTL property verify, one can build a Buchi automaton A like this where sigma is 2 to the power of AP, where AP is the set of atomic proposition or variables in verify okay. and the length of the number of states in Q is upper bounded by the 2 to the power of the length of verify. Okay. So, remember that the verify, the, this, sig, this mod verify is the length of verify and 2 to the power of the length of verify is an exponential in the length of the formula and the number of states in the Buchi automata is upper bounded by that. Okay. Now, let us, we will not go through the construction of this because that is the proof of the theorem where you show that any generic LTL property can be converted to a Buchi automata. Instead to understand that what this means. Let us look at some examples. So, if you have A until B, then this is the corresponding Buchi automata. So, we as long as we get A, we stay here, when we get B, we go here, and then whatever we get, we stay here. Right? So, if I define this as the, as the accepting state, right, then the A until B after I get the B, then I keep keep on in, uh, staying in this state. So, it satisfies the Buchi acceptance condition right? because once I reach here, I cannot go anywhere else. I am just here only and this is the accepting state. Right? Look at P until Q until R. So, as long as I get P, I can stay here. When I get a Q, I, I can go here okay, and then I can get q, 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 q and then I, when I get r, I go here. Okay. From here, if I directly got r, I would have gone here. Right. But once I reach this state again, I stay here forever. So, again, uh, it is easy to see that 
when you reach here you have already got p until q until r right when you reach this state you already have p until q until r because you have you could have reached here after getting r directly or you could have reached here after getting p several times and then q several times and then r or you could have got q straight away and then r or q straight away and then several q's and then r so each for each way in which p until q until r can be satisfied you will end up here right and then you stay here forever so the accepting state is visited infinitely often right now these two do not actually demonstrate the need for visiting the accepting states infinitely often right like these two are almost like the type of automata that we knew before now when you come to this one let us see what this says it says always in the future p and next p okay so p and next p is you get a p and then you get another p so if you get two successive p's then you have matched this part once right and let's say that we define this to be the accepting state but once you have reached here you again have to reach some state where p and xp is true why because you have this always so it is not sufficient to get p and xp only once in the path you have to get p and xp in the path infinitely often so then that is guaranteed if we define this to be our f in the bookie acceptance set so if this state is visited infinitely often that means i am getting p and xp infinitely often right okay these are all non deterministic bookie automata non deterministic this theorem says that we can you actually end up building a non deterministic bookie automata i did not mention it here so these are all non deterministic bookie automata right now uh, is that fairly clear that what is the relationship between ltl properties and bookie automata so we can construct a bookie automata which uh, the accepting runs of which are accepting runs for the ltl property hmm. Oh, it is any other symbol, yes, any symbol. True. Now, this is the interesting thing. There exist languages which are accepted by some non deterministic Bookie automaton, but not by any deterministic Bookie automaton. Now, remember that in our normal automata, finite state automata that we studied the non deterministic and the deterministic have the same power in other words that any language which is accepted by a non deterministic finite state machine is also accepted by a deterministic finite state machine and we have a very clear cut algorithm for determinization of the non deterministic automata right now that is not the case for bookie automata which is a major difference okay now to see that uh, just look at this example this example of course does not prove this result but it actually shows that where the difficulty lies okay but the formal proof is there in the paper we are not going to discuss that in the class but let us see this example which shows that there is some automaton which uh, i mean this there doesn't seem to be a straightforward way of determinization of that right? now let's see what this says this is uh, we want to write an acceptor for the language uh, alpha belong to belongs to ab to the omega where the number of b's in alpha is less than infinity so we want to say that b is not occurring infinitely often right a language which accepts all those infinite words over a and b 
where b does not occur infinitely often, right. So, we can represent that very easily using a Bouquet automaton which says which goes something like this that I start with q i the initial state and I stay here as long as I get a or b or a or b and then after that after some point I go over to a I go over to this state f where only a is accepted right. Now, you see that um, those infinite words in which b occurs less than infinitely often for them there will be some last b after the last b we will have only a so then you go over to this and then stay here forever right now if you if we try to determinize this using our standard non deterministic to deterministic uh, automata transformation then what are we going to do we are going to actually the, the states of the deterministic automata are the subsets of the states of the non deterministic automata right. So, that is how we determinize a non deterministic automata. So, here we can uh, de if we determinize it using our classical method then this is what is going to happen. I will have one state for q i and the other which has q i and f together right. So, two uh, sets of states and as long as I have b I stay here when I get a a. So, now look this is deterministic when I have b I stay here when I get a a I, I come here right as long as I have a I will stay here and then when I get b I go back here right. So, if I end up in the so, so for every finite word you see if you end here then you have ended with a's only right ok. For finite words that is what it would mean that I always end with a's because whenever I get a b I end up here which is not an accepting state ok. But for infinite words we have a problem because this also accepts the words a b omega okay which means that a and b both occur infinitely often that is also accepted here right because if you look at bouquet acceptance here then it is fine if we go around in this loop forever because the accepting state is being in visited infinitely often right this state is the accepting state and we visit it infinitely often so we can go around and round in this forever so, it does not it also accepts words where b occurs infinitely often according to Bouquet acceptance right. So, it does not solve our problem. So, let me reiterate what I said just now. What I said just now is that if you take this non deterministic Bouquet automaton and attempt to determinize it using the same technique as determinization of finite state automata right like we used to do in our second year courses. Then the problem is that this if we treat this as a Bouquet automata then it also accepts words in which b occurs infinitely often. On the other hand if you say that the that we will ap apply Muller acceptance here then what does Muller acceptance says? that the accepting set of states should be such that the automata gets stuck there right. So, if your if your run is such that the automata gets stuck in this state then that is what you want you want the run to go through this b b b a b a b as many number of times but then somewhere down the line it should reach this state and then never get a b again. So, in other words you want it to reach here and then stay here only not come out of this, but that is what is stated by the Mueller acceptance right. So, the what is the crux of this whole story? The crux of this story is that if you we know a method for translating from LTL to Bouquet automata. Then when we want to determinize the Bouquet automata we see that every non deterministic Bouquet automata does not have an equivalent deterministic Bouquet automata 
So, there are languages which are accepted by non deterministic Bouquet automata, not accepted by any deterministic Bouquet automata, right. So, therefore, if we try to determinize that and then take the product and find out whether the accepting states are visited infinitely often, that is not going to work, right. So, therefore, what should we do about that? We, however, we do see that if we change the acceptance condition to Muller acceptance, in this particular case, we do see that uh, our desired acceptance is met on the deterministic automaton. Now, let us see what we do about this. So, this is what we are going to study now. We are going to study the method formal method for building the Bouquet automaton B not phi from the LTL property. We will call this the tableau ok and we will compute the product of the implementation model M with the tableau and each state of M is labeled with propositions, each state of B not phi is labeled with propositions. We will match states with the same labels, this is the product computation and then the product accepted if the, pro, uh, the uh, ok. We will uh, what is the product of this? The product will be another automaton ok, which will contain common traces between B not phi and M ok. If there is any trace which is common between them, then we have found a counter example. Now, let us see the product the construction of the to study the tableau construction, we will first define what is called elementary formulas. Okay. An LTL formula where phi is called elementary, if it is a variable belonging to the set of atomic propositions, a negated variable belonging to the set of atomic propositions or the outermost operator is a next operator. So, these are the elementary sub formulas. Before we go into the rules, let us see some examples of elementary sub formulas. Right. So, suppose we have the sub form uh, the LTL property P until Q, right. So, we will rewrite this as follows we will rewrite this as Q for P and X ok. Now, see this is an elementary sub formula because it is an atomic proposition. This is an elementary sub formula because it is an atomic proposition and this is also an elementary sub formula because it is a because the outermost operator is an x all right so here we will have the elementary sub formulas will be p q x p until q right all right so let's see how we construct the elementary sub formulas from where phi so, elementary sub formula of where phi is where phi itself if where phi is belongs to atomic proposition. So, if the if, if the property is a atomic proposition then it itself is the elementary sub formula. If you have not of where phi then elementary sub formulas of not of where phi is the same as the elementary formulas of where phi. So, not is simply dropped ok. So, if you have a disjunction of two uh, properties where phi and psi, then the elementary sub formulas of this union elementary sub formulas of this gives you the elementary sub formulas of this ok. For a formula of the type x where phi, x where phi is a elementary sub formula ok, union elementary sub formulas of where phi. So, the elementary sub formulas of x where phi 
is x verify itself union elementary sub formula of verify. Then elementary sub, sub formulas of this until this is this one union elementary sub formulas of this elementary sub formulas of this right ok. So, suppose we want to uh, get the elementary sub formulas of f p and g q. How are we going to compute that? First of all, let us rewrite this in terms of the we, we will make this and as the or. So, we first use De Morgan right. So, not of not f p ok or not g q right. Now, elementary sub formulas of this is elementary sub formulas of this right which is equal to the elementary sub formulas of see not we do not care. So, it is not of f p or not of g q right. So, this in turn is elementary of not of f p or union rather union elementary of not of g q right. This is elementary of f p union elementary of g q right. Now, what do we rewrite f p s elementary of p or x f p right union elementary of this we will write as Now, see again here you can rewrite this as not f not q right. So, this is going to be elementary of p which is p union of this which is x f p right union this is going to let me rewrite it once again not q or first of all this not is going to get dropped. So, just look at it as f not q. So, not q or x f not q. Right. So, we will have p uh, union x f p union q union x f not q. Okay. So, these become the elementary sub formulas. Okay. Now, to create the tableau, we will say we will treat each of these elementary sub formulas as a state bit and we will cons construct if there are k such elementary sub formulas, we will construct a state space cons cons consisting of 2 to the power of k states. All right. Now, so, the set of states of the tableau is S t which is 2 to the power of elementary verify. Okay. So, it is the power set of the set of elementary sub formulas. 
Now, the labeling function LT is defined as follows. We will first define labels on the states. So far, we have not put in any transitions. We will define labels on the states. So, which are the, so sad verify refers to the set of states, okay, which, which are to be labeled with verify, okay. So, it is S such that verify belongs to S if verify is elementary of verify. So, if verify is an elementary sub formula, then in those states where that elementary formula, the state bit corresponding to that elementary sub formula is true, they all belong to set of verify. How, what are the set of states? The set of states are the are constructed based on the elementary sub formula. So, if I have k elementary sub formulas, right. So, let us go back to our example that we had earlier for corresponding uh, the example that we saw in the last previous class that we had uh, what was the property that we were seeing f q right. Okay. And then we broke it down into q or xfq, right. And then based on these q and xfq, we had four states, remember in the tableau. Which were those four states? We had q, xfq as one state we had not q x f q as another state and the then we had q not x f q as one state and not q and not x f q as another state right now we first I start by saying that okay if we have if verify is uh, one of these these things so, say supposing q right so what is sat q let us name these states so let us name these states as s1 s2 s3 s4 okay what is sat of q, set of q is s1, s4, right. Why? Because this q is one of the atomic, uh, su, uh, one of the elementary sub formulas and therefore, I know that if this elementary sub formula is true here and is true here, it is not true here it is not true here. So, set of q is this. Okay. What is set of x f q? Set of x f q s 1 and s 2. Right. Similarly, set of not x f q s 4 and s 3, right. And what about set of f q? See, set of f q, no, 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 set of f q can be written as set of q union of set 
set of x is q right why do we write this because q can be fq can be satisfied in two ways one is q is q holds straight away or those states in which x f q holds which means that in future q will hold right so if we get these two then s1 s2 s4 right so that's what this sat tells us that set of verb phi is S if uh, verb phi belongs to S and verb phi is an elementary sub formula. Not of that is defined as verb phi does not belong to set verb phi, so just a complementary set of states. Okay. So if, if set of verb phi is a set of states, then the complementary set of states is the set of not verb phi. Remember the set of states is finite always. Sat verify you or shy is sat verify union set of shy. And set of verify until shy is set of shy union set of verify intersect set of x verify until shy. This is this is uh, obviously the case because the states which satisfy this are the states which satisfy shy and those states which satisfy verify and satisfy uh, verify until shy in the future in the next state. Right? Now, this is all defining what are holding at which uh, states. The next thing is to define what is the transition relation? So, where do we put the edges in the table? Right? So, the transition relation is defined here like this that uh, the transition relation R S S dash is the intersection of these things that I put a transition from S to S dash provided that S belongs to set of X shy if and only if S dash belongs to set of shy. Right? So, from this state S to this state S dash we will put a transition. Okay? Let us come back to this picture example and first understand what this means. Now, we are looking at x f q here, right. So, we have to put an edge from x f q to a state which belongs to sat q, okay, sat of q. Which are the states which satisfy sat of q? So, this one okay, to okay. see this is x f q which which are the states which are in set of f q s 1 is 2 s 4 right. So, we must put edges from here to s 1 s 2 s 4. Why did we do this? because this state has x of psi where psi is f q and we are putting edges to those states which are in sat of psi which means sat of f q right all right similarly look at this one this is x x f q so which are the states in uh, sat of f q s1 is to s4 so we need to put edges to s1 S2, S4. Okay. Look at this one. This is X of not FQ. So, which are the states in SAT of not FQ? 
S3. Okay. So, from here we must have an edge to this. This one is X of not FQ, okay, which is the state which belongs to set of not FQ S3. All right. So, what did we do? We looked at each state of the tableau and whenever we had any property of the form x where psi, we put an edge from the state which has x psi to some state which s which belongs to sat of psi. Okay. So, that is what this picture tells us that this transition relation consists of those transitions from S to S dash such that S belongs to set of X psi and S dash belongs to set of psi. Okay. For all X psi belongs to elementary formulas of Valpai. For every elementary subformula which starts with an X, we do this exercise. Is that clear? Right. Now, having computed the tableau and having extracted out the finite state machine from this, we have to find out the intersection and the emptiness. Right. This is something that we will study in the next lecture that how do we compute the emptiness of the product automaton. All right. There are some algorithms for doing that. Remember that the acceptance is still Buki acceptance. It is not just reaching a particular state, but it is reaching accepting states infinitely often. We will see how we do that in the next class.